Welcome back to the Speed Sport Podcast Studios. You're listening to Fast Car to NASCAR with Mike Wallace. My name is Jeff Kent. Once again, joining us on the line, NASCAR President Steve Phelps. And here's Mike Wallace. Well, Steve, just to let you know how much of an effect, we're going to get back to you in just a second, but how much of an effect the North Wilkesboro race has on handy camping centers uh, invited me to be a, a, do some autographs for them, and they're getting a big promotion around the Wilkesboro race. So you're affecting the whole county up there. Just thought I'd share that with you. They love you guys. <laughs> no, I know. The, the county's been terrific, and everyone you talk to at the county, and you know, I uh, met a bunch of folks up there, and and they're just race fans, uh, and they're just so excited that we're coming back for for the All Star Race um, at North Wilkesboro. So, and, and the and the folks at Speedway Motorsports have worked really hard, you know, to get the facility, um, you know, in shape to be able to to bring that a premier event like the NASCAR All Star Race there. So, really, hats off to to Marcus and his whole team. Great. So let me, uh, sorry to interrupt that. I, I kind of get jumping around at times. I don't follow the pattern very well because I have no script. So, <laughs> and, the show is one big ad lib. <laughs> yes. So uh, you were talking about you uh, were at the NFL, then you got recruited, I'm assuming, through uh, someone at NASCAR, the France family, someone came calling. Yep. How, how did that happen? How do you get a call when you're you're really good at what you do in another uh, in this particular case at the NFL? Does somebody just pick up the phone and call you, or is there a pretty much? Yeah, we it actually came through a recruiter, mm -hmm. but I met I had met Brian France at a number of events because we shared a, shared a significant number of sponsors like a Coca Cola, um, and so Brian was. Um, I think he, he was warm to the uh, the idea about bringing me on. Um, they were looking to have someone, um, you know, be the head of the near, their New York office. Um, Brett Yormark had had recently left the organization, so they're looking for someone. And it was it was um, initially it, it wasn't something I thought I wanted to do um, until I actually met with with Brian, and then I had dinner with Lisa Kennedy, and they convinced me that what I would be doing for NASCAR was so much more important for NASCAR, honestly, than it was for the NFL. Um, because the money we brought in at the NFL was a bit of a rounding error relative to where their media relationships were and some of their other revenue streams, which I think is true. And so, but it was more than that. When I spoke to them, it was really this sense of community that was just so different than the NFL. And, you know, as I was starting to, to say at the end of every town hall that we do for our employees, I always finish the same way. It's like every single one of you has the opportunity to help grow our sport. If you choose to do that, talking to, you know, exposing our sport to friends and families and acquaintances and advocating for the sport, everyone can drive growth in this sport if you choose to. And I would hope you would want to do that. Um, and I think it's important, but this sense of community is so different than, and, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I started at NASCAR in August and I remember going to, I think we were in Kansas, uh, in the fall. So not soon after I started and I was in the garage before it actually opened and I was just sitting in, in by our, you know, kitchen hauler and sitting on a, a bench by myself having a cup of coffee and this guy comes out of his way didn't know who i was comes out of his way because he was kind of walking in a straight line and he came over to me and he just said hey i want to i just want to say good morning how you doing today and i'm like i'm doing i'm doing great richard childress <laughs> <laughs> went out of his way didn't know who i was no he, idea he really didn't know who you were did not know Oh my gosh. Know. So, and that's what this sport's about, right? Is, you know, it's just, um, so <laughs> I was talking to a fan yesterday and up, up walks Richard Childress. Well, he does know me now. Yeah. And the, and the fans like, Oh, I'll let you talk to Richard. I'm like, he, he's, he's good. Um, and then, you know, they took my picture with him and then, um, I took their picture, I'm um, sorry, with me. And then I took their picture with him. So oh, you made that's your day our right there. About. Right. And that's um, it's um, that's the sense of community that exists. Now, we may not always 
we actually are more like family than not because let's be honest you know your brother's not coming on the show. Maybe he's trying to, trying to tell you a message, Mike. Oh, I, so, hey, I'm I, just joking. No, but it's, I, but that's I believe my, my that. Point is you know, I, family. Everybody's right? had their little. What they message do. would that be? Wobble. I've heard your show, Mike. I, 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 you know, and I'll say my brother only goes on big time deals. He's a he's a, a Hall of Famer, a NASCAR right. Hall of Famer, right? NASCAR he champion, and, yeah. and th- he's got a lot of demand on him still today. A lot of people want him to do things and. You know, I think when he heard about this show originally, he thought it was you and I were sitting in some closet somewhere and nobody ever heard it. Well, we are. In, until <laughs> it's been found, found out that the world's listening. That's right. The whole you world know? is listening. And, and when I, I, I now and then I send him the guest list and Richard Childress has been on our show. That's right. You know, Felix you Sabatis has been on our show. Mario Andretti Mario, has been on yeah. our show. I mean, so Come on. we are real, as they I say. I can get him a Snickers bar for his appearance. Yep. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> then, then I, I pulled the Trump card that I didn't even know I had. Not literally, but the the, the car, right card. And uh, we had Steve Phelps on. He, he said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> well, the only, the only reason why is because, you know, he and I, live in the same building here in Daytona. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, if you see him or you talk to him in the next week, say, hey, I, man, I was on your brother's show, and it was unbelievable. I, <laughs> he killed it. Yeah, we did. we're going to kill it. We, we, <laughs> we are currently killing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'm glad you uh, translated that. I'll have to ask him someday what that message was that I can get it clarified. But uh, That's great. Yeah. So uh, where were we at on that now? I I lost track. I'm not of... sure, but so it, it, just the the transition from from the NFL to NASCAR. Oh, yes, right? it, to me, it was the best. It was the best thing for me. You know, at the NFL, you know, for any number of reasons, I had I had plateaued and been in the same job for almost seven years, and I, I thought I could do more. And the opportunity to work at a sport that I love, and I love the NFL too. Honestly, I love NFL football. It's tremendous. Um. But the opportunity to come and you know come to NASCAR and you know hopefully see significant growth you know over the time I have left here is uh, is something I'm I'm eager to do and we've had an opportunity to to turn this sport around because we had seen some some softness and and now we're now we're growing again it feels good. Right. So having said that, then you worked at the NFL. You're you're now with NASCAR. You're the VP of corporate marketing in 2005. And do you bring fresh ideas and new ideas? Did you have did you have big ideas? Did you have a lot of things you wanted to accomplish? I think, um, yeah, I mean, for my job at that particular time really was around around selling sponsorships. And so uh, I would say the sport was doing a tremendous job of selling sponsorship and Brett and his team did a great job. Um, I brought a little bit of a different approach, um, which is instead of slicing and dicing categories, you know, to the nth degree is that we're going to actually create larger partnerships that create larger opportunities for those partners to help promote our sport. Um, and from there, six months later, they made me the chief marketing officer. So it was a bit of a jump from, what I was most comfortable with, um, which was, you know, kind of the selling and partnership back to where I was actually being a marketer. Um, and so I would, I was overseeing not just the partnerships and the new business, but, um, marketing and communications and all the marketing functions. And, uh, that was, um, that was, a um, an exciting time for me because it, it, it let me do some things that, um, you know, kind of bridge those two jobs that are the, the multiple jobs that I had up until that point. Steve, can you explain to everyone, including me and Jeff, what what is the difference of those two jobs when you're selling sponsorships and then the word marketing? Where do those vary? Yep. Uh, you know, as a driver who we used to have to find and help and continue to find partners in the sport, we used to call them sponsors. Doesn't seem like yeah. that's the right phrase, but where does that? I, I've always been confused on on that. How does? Uh... So, yeah. So I think it's it. I'll. I think it's as simple as this. On, on the, on the partnership side or the sponsorship side, we're looking for two things. We're looking for money, and we're looking for companies that could help grow the sport through their own advertising and promotions that they would do. Um, and I think what happened. This was difficult for the sport. 
is that as we went through you know 2009 and 2010 and going through the recession it really companies scaled back and so they didn't want to lose their nascar sponsorships but they wanted to scale them back and then the the marketing advertising and promotion of it they pulled back even more um, because they just couldn't afford it and so that's kind of became the norm and we've tried to to grow that back what became clear is that if we were going to market the sport, we would have to do it in, in some cases largely by ourselves. So the sport was built on the backs of companies like Winston and Coke and you know different sponsors that were out there that were partners of the teams or partner of the drivers um, or partners through the sanctioning body of the tracks. And now we had to do it ourselves. And so what we tried to do is that, so we increased our own advertising, uh, marketing, and promotion bucket. So it was instead of going to a third party, which was done by the sponsors, um, it was being done directly by us. Um, and it's tough to, to pick up the slack of all that money that the, the sponsors were spending to drive the sport forward. So, But we needed to do it. We still need to do it. In fact, we need to do a better job of it. And that's what my people are working on right now. One of the most important things that we can do is make sure that uh, the industry is speaking with one voice. And when I say the industry, I'm talking about obviously the sanctioned body and the tracks that we own, but the tracks that Marcus Smith owns and the independent tracks, as well as the teams and the drivers. If everyone is, um, is understanding the direction we need to go in and all are, are working together in order to accomplish that, this sport is going to continue to grow and it's going to continue to grow at a, at a accelerated rate. I think that's absolutely doable. So that's kind of the difference as I see it, Mike, between sponsorship and, you know, and as versus direct, direct marketing advertising that we need to do as a sport. I got you. Question. Another question I have is I, I read some things that you've said and people have reproduced it out there where and why, uh, you know, NASCAR has always been the sanctioning body. They're, they're the boss, but there used to be International Speedway Corporation, which, you know, the people inside the sport, you say, well, the, that's the biggest part of the France family or whatever. But there was a big thing a couple of years ago where you guys, uh, you, meaning NASCAR, took in, I guess the best way to say it is you bought the assets. You bought all the racetracks from the Internet. And I, I read that you it was kind of like it was for the betterment of the sport. And what did that mean? Yep. Why would you have done sure. that? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I, I think that the merging of NASCAR and International Speedway Corporation is probably gets the least amount of credit to the trajectory of this where the sport is now in growing. And the reason why I say that is if you're ISC and you're a publicly traded company, which they were, they have a responsibility to their shareholders to maximize their profits. And we don't have to do that, honestly. And so it's been a fundamental shift in how the, the amount of money that we are spending relative to where, where International Speedway Corporation was at. Um, and probably from a fan perspective, the biggest example I can point to is what we do now with something I call schedule variation. So for 20 years, the, the schedule really like from 2000 to 2020, it was exactly the same schedule. Exactly. And you know, it, a date may move a week or we may take one race that, you know, and, and move it somewhere else. But for the most part, the fans were getting the same, same thing and they were not happy about it they wanted to see schedule variation do something differently have more short tracks have more road courses and that's what they were telling us so if you're an international speedway corporation and you want to take a date for michigan and have a, a date for michigan to go from two races to one well it's not as efficient to do that right it's you can't amortize the cost ac across two races you can only do it you know across one mm -hmm. And so us going to, you know, the LA Coliseum never would have happened, right? If, if we just would have continued to race here 
an event at you know the class that really wasn't performing well. Um, I mean, just really wasn't. Um, and so we needed to shake things up or the opportunity to go take a race to the, uh, and race a street course, street course for the first time. We're going to lose a lot of money on that event. Um, but it's done for all the right reasons to grow the sport. So the class at the class at the Coliseum, 70, 70% of all the people who went to the event last year and this year were first time NASCAR fans. And the sales in Chicago are trending even higher than that. 